I'm going to discuss about cyclopezic refraction today. So first comes to the introduction. First we have to do the objective refraction. So it determines the refractive status on the basis of the optical principle of refraction. It is done to obtain an objective measurement of the patient's refractive status. Example, keratometer, retinoscope, water, refractometer, optometers are used to measure refractive status of the eye. What is subjective refraction? It determines the refractive status using combination of sphere and cylindrical lenses that artificially place the far point of each of patient at infinity provide base visual acuity with accommodation relaxed most plus or less minus is given is selected base vision sphere is selected on the basis of most plus or less minus now what is cyclopezic refraction it determines the total refractive error during temporary paralysis of ciliary muscle with installation of cyclopezic drugs So we'll discuss about indications, contraindications, and adverse effects of cyclopezic drugs as well. So what is the indication of cyclopezic refraction? Pseudomyopia, latent hyperopia, strabismus, yeah, young children, all the young children we do. Most in all the young children, we need to do cyclopezic refraction in consistent endpoint of refraction. Young patient who have symptoms but not significant. Contraindications are narrow angle glaucoma, hypersensitivity to a specific cyclopezic drugs. Narrow angle glaucoma, how? The cyclopezic drop, the cyclopezia effect with dilate the pupil, which may reduce the anterior chamber angle depth and it may lead to narrow angle closure glaucoma. The adverse effects are blurred vision, photophobia, photophobia, I'm sorry, the spelling is wrong, the systemic side effect, okay, except the tropicamide, except without tropicamide won't cause any adverse effect systemic side effect. So what are the cycloplasic agents? So first of all, cycloplintolate, uh, usual dosage is one drop of one percent solution. We use time of onset of cycloplasic effect is about 25 to 35 minutes. Duration of maximum cycloplasic effect lasts up to 30 to 45 minutes. Duration of residual cyclopezic effect up to 6 to 24 hours. And systemic side effects are hallucinations, sometimes ataxia or disorientation. Then comes to tropicamide. We need to instill 3 drop of 1% of solution at 1 minute intervals. That is that 3 drop of 1% solution in 1 minute interval. It is like in 10 minutes interval. So time for onset of cyclopezic effect is about 20 to 30 minutes. After installation of the drug, the effect will come at about 20 to 30 minutes of duration. Then duration of maximum cyclopezic effect will be at maybe mo no more than 15 minutes. And duration of residual cyclopezic effect will be last up to 2 to 6 hours. And there are no systemic side effect that has been found or has been reported yet. Then for atropine, how the atropine is applied? Two or three times daily for three days before cyclopezic refraction. So we need to prescribe two or three times daily for three days before we do the cyclopezic refraction on the patient. We'll recommend the patients. A, uh, for children, we can recommend for child, very young infant or child, we can recommend ointment. Uh, or for the adult, we can recommend eye drop also. Eye drop mainly 
and then time of onset of cyclopsic effect will be about 30 minutes to 3 days. It will take 30 minutes to 3 days. The duration of maximum cyclopsic effect lasts up to 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. So duration of residual cyclopsic effect will last up to 7 to 10 days or up to 14 days. Systemic side effects. Just find it out. Homotropin. 1 to 2 drops of 1% solution we used. Time of onset of cyclopsy effect will be about at 40 to 60 minutes. Duration of maximum cyclopsy effect will occur at 30 to 60 minutes. Then residual cyclopsy effect about 1 to 3 days it will last. Systemic side effects. Again, it's up to you how you find it out. Okay. These are some of the examples um, I will discuss. So sometimes this considers this atropine is highly toxic. If the drug is used, you need to give a proper instruction to the patient. What are the procedures? First, you need to take the precautions prior to installation. History taking and any previous any reaction, any adverse reaction happen with the cyclopsic drugs or other oculus systemic medications family history, any kind of allergy history, these are the basic history or the very important history that you need to take. The anterior chamber angle depth should be evaluated on this late examination. You can use voluntary grading technique. IOP should be always measured. You should take the visual equity prior to prior you instill the prior to installation of the cyclopsic agent because after putting the cyclopsic um, agent the accommodation will be stopped because of the cyclopsic effect and you won't get a proper visual equity. Cyclopsic refraction, cyclopsic drugs. Punctal, punctal occlusion should be applied. These are the precautions. Refraction should be done. Procedure for uh, cyclopsic refraction. You should do, do the refraction objective and subjective refraction prior to it. Then you should provide sunglasses while the pupil are still dilated. Because pupil are dilated, the patient will suffer from photophobia. Advice not to drive or operate any kind of moving machinery. Advice of the expected time, course of cyclopsia to wear off. Yes, we always need to tell the patient about the expected time, course of cyclopsia to wear off because patient might have some kind of important work that he doesn't want to miss. So, informing him is very primary and very important. Post cyclopsia refraction, what are the precautions you should take? You should take the or you should do you would take the visual equity do the refraction again measure the anterior chamber angle LA can be used with installation of cyclophysia to minimize the discomfort and distress in young children yes so local anesthesia you can use. So this is the anterior chamber angle depth evaluation using the von Erich test or Penlight test. Let's not discuss about it right now. So you should know the difference between cyclopsic and non cyclopsic refraction and you should understand the indication, contraindication and adverse reaction of cyclopsic drugs drugs available for cycloplegia because you need to be able to explain the different differences between the cyclopsic drugs in terms of dosages, time of onset, duration of residual effects, side effects, etc. 